episode of South African Boxing Talk. Uh, boy band's back, and let's just talk a bit about the history. Uh, Hayden, myself, and Cyril, we started this concept four years ago, four and a half years ago. Four and a half years ago. Four and a half years ago. And Hayden's been running the show, and he's done a marvelous job. We've got over 10,000 subscribers. Sorry, 2,000 subscribers. 2,000 yeah. subscribers, and it's just going from strength to strength. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Well, we thought, besides the boy band being back together, we thought that it would have some sort of relevance in the South African boxing market. And since we were last together, which was 2016, we've all done relatively well in terms of success, in terms of our careers and so forth. You've been doing stuff for ESPN, you've been writing independently as well. And Hayden, I mean, I'm not even going to mention you because everyone just knows Hayden's a boxing man in South Africa. Um, we've, uh, we've produced three legitimate world champions, uh, when I say we, hot box gym. Um, and it's just, I thought the time, and we actually collectively thought the timing was right for the three of us to get together and start talking about boxing. So, the topics we're going to be talking about first and foremost this weekend was a disastrous weekend for South African boxing. So, Lani Teti being upset losing his WBO World Championship to John Casimiro. Big upset. We were talking off camera. I predicted it last week. I said Casimiro would win. And I thought basically because of the camps. I thought Zolani shouldn't have prepared in his land and I thought that was a big factor to consider. And Casimiro, if you've been following him, he obviously prepared with Mimo, who's a world-class strength and conditioning coach, and he also prepared with good sparring in Las Vegas. Where do you think Zolani goes to from here? Well, from here it's very difficult. I mean, you can't get an automatic rematch, it's a knockout. And you think about Zolani Tess's preparation, 13 months since he had been in the ring, put in a a mild performance against Aloyan in the quarterfinals. Uh, we don't know what would have happened against Oney, but his head was stuck in the new air fight. I think, you know, you've got to deal with, with what's in front of you, the Casemiro fight. Where does he go from here? He's got to build up again 10 rounders. You know, I, he might get released by Frank Warren as a result yeah. of this as well, which is very sad because there's no market appeal for South Africans overseas. So I think he's lost that opportunity. But coming back here, you've got to start again with 10 rounders. Not to say that, it, you know, you can't become a world champion again because the qualities are there. But he's got a he's, he's, pro, he's got a guard against a, a defense that's a little bit better, and that's the other thing. So, do you think do you think there was overconfidence going into this contest? I think he could have been overconfident. I mean, he was already talking about fighting in New Year before he could beat Casemiro, which I thought was a bit premature. But I, it was a surprise. I was still surprised that he lost. But yeah, well, where, where do you think he should go to? I mean, Hayden spoke about coming back with a few ten rounders. I mean, obviously. Fighters have lost before and they've come back to become world champions. So, so what would you suggest if you were part of this team? Yeah, I, I agree with Hayden. Yeah, a, few ten, a couple of ten rounders, tune up, you know, you just get back, get back into the rankings, get back into title contention, and then see you take it from there. How does Casemiro do against Monster? Uh, I think he's going to want to stand, you know, typical Filipino boxer. I think he's going to want to stand so with Monster. And that's one thing you should. No, that's a great fight, fight, though. I mean, it's a great fight, but I don't see anyone. Anyone beating Monster uh, in that division, and that would have been including Tetsu, even if he had got past uh, Casemiro. There is just no one better than uh, anywhere at the moment. Yeah, I think he's going to be fighting for Bali anyway for the BC Championship for unification. Saturday at Empress Palace, there were a couple of upsets. Uh, Rob yeah. what did you make of his performance? Well, I thought, you know, I, mean, I think it was a it was a body shot that took him down. I was quite surprised. I was, quite, you know, I thought I thought that, that fight would go the distance. Brandon Tisa looked very good, he looked good, he was brilliant, and yeah, Rourke, he didn't, wasn't impressive, eh? How did you have the scores going well, in? I had it even going into the, going into the seventh round, obviously, uh, the three knockdowns, uh, I mean, the lopsided, but 3-3 going in after six rounds. I thought it was a very competitive fight, I thought Rourke landed some big shots, I thought Brandon landed some big shots, and it was very crowd entertaining. Then after the body shot, that's all she wrote, unfortunately, for Rourke. Do you think? Do you think it was more mental situation with Rock? From what I what I saw, it looked to me more. The first body shot was really hard. And the next two seemed to be just a mental issue with him. What, what did you think? Yeah, he seemed to be waiting for the for the especially the last one. He seemed to just be waiting for it to like just to get out of there. Yeah, so I think the, yeah, I think he did check out mentally. Right, Alan, coming back. How did you score the fight going into the last round? Well, I, you know, also I had that one very close as well. I think um, standing toe to toe with Trita was something a bit different that we haven't seen Boy doing, you know, uh, as opposed to him moving around. Again, a couple of low blows in there as well, which 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 slow him down. But Boy, it's very tactical. Um, it takes a good time to recover. 
And um, yeah, the knockouts I think helped. I don't know how the judges scored the fight, but I think the knockouts uh, for him uh, took the results. Yeah, and it's, it's, again, it's not where you start, it's where you end in boxing, of course. Final, who's your pick and why? Brendan Taser, I think, I don't think, um, Boyd, Boyd Allen is awkward, but I don't think he'll stay away from Taser that well. Taser's, Taser's I think, is, is improving, is looking good. I, I go for it. Also, that momentum that keeps yeah. shifting. Mm -hmm. Who's your pick and why? Well, I think Brandon goes in, in as the favorite, and judging by the two performances, I would say Brandon, judging just, just primarily on the fashion in which, in which he won. However, if we look back to the first fight, uh, Boyd did win the first seven rounds and probably Brandon won, uh, won the last five rounds, in my opinion, which, which caused a split decision. I think a lot of people saw it differently. Uh, but however it goes in, Brandon's definitely the favorite. So if you ask me right now who I think is going to win is Brandon, going close to the fight, my mind might change. Of course, the main event, Nicholas Radley caved in four rounds against Rowan Campbell. Um, it was supposed to be a competitive fight, it wasn't that. Um, yeah, Nick just looked out of sorts. To me, he looked slightly overcooked. Um, maybe the weight cuts took it out of him. Rowan was very impressive. What's your opinion? Yeah, Rowan keeps impressing, you know. He, he keeps winning the fights. They give him the tough fights, he wins. So, you can't, you can't knock him for that. He's, yeah, and, yeah, you're right, the Radley did look a bit overcooked. Um, yeah, I expected a more competitive fight, but it, it wasn't. Reyna? <laughs> Reyna Liebenberg against uh, uh, Rowan Campbell. That's a very interesting fight. Uh, Reyna's the, the Wiley veteran, and of course his, his record isn't what it is. So I think on paper, a lot of people will underestimate Reyna Liebenberg. You know, Rowan Campbell's the guy that's coming through the ranks again. Um, I think it'll be a competitive fight. You know, Rowan is relentless. Uh, if Brandon manages to break his rhythm, I think it could be a very tricky fight for Rowan Campbell. I don't think he, he's faced someone on Reyna's level, and I think a lot of people know that. But again, the step up from Rowan Campbell with Patrick McCullough, I, think, I don't think a lot of people expected Rowan to dispatch him in the manner in which he did. So when you look at analyzing that fight, I think that it might be a close fight, but it might not be. This weekend is one of the biggest boxing events. Probably, it actually is the big, biggest boxing event of the year. You've got the rematch, the heavyweight championship of the world, Andy Ruiz making the first defense of his unified, or probably not besides the WBC, besides Wilder against Anthony Joshua. It was a massive upset for world boxing when Ruiz stopped Anthony Joshua. I thought it was a great result for boxing, and I'll explain to you why. The average sporting person watching boxing, sitting on a couch, overweight, eating chips, drinking beer, looks like Andy Ruiz. And all of a sudden, this big, beautiful guy, body beautiful too, gets knocked out by the guy eating chips, chocolates, the Snicker Man, and it created a storm in boxing. And those kind of fans who were watching, couch potato fans, became more intrigued and more involved in the sport. So I thought it was a great result for boxing, and it did a lot for the sport. But the rematch is very intriguing because to me, it's a 50-50 fight. What's your opinion on why? I lean, to, I, I lean towards Ruiz winning this one. I think Ruiz will still be, far, still be faster. He's got good hand speed. And he looks, he looks like he's lost a bit of weight now. So I think he, I think he beats, beats Joshua again. I'm going to go for Joshua and I'm going to lean towards him because one, Andy Ruiz has all of a sudden got money. You see his spending <laughs> habits. They are terrible spending habits. He's bought the biggest house, the latest cars. And I granted he has been cutting down the weight, but is that to his detriment? Why is he taking the sport seriously? He's so late in his career. Uh, Anthony Joshua's also cut down a lot of weight. He's very mechanical, Joshua, but a lighter Ruiz, could he have a lighter chin? See, I, I think it's going to come down to tactics. I think Ruiz fights the same way, and I think Joshua, when he got buzzed in the second round with the left hook, if you looked at the knockdowns, there were actually right hands over the top, and you couldn't make the adjustments on his left side. If he can make the adjustments, and sort out Ruiz's attacks in that position in the pocket and make it a boring fight, I think he can win on points or even wear Ruiz down stop him late. If not, I think we're kind of looking at the same fight as the first fight. Mm. Well, I think what's interesting is that, you know, with Joshua getting smaller, it's like a lot of the other, uh, Bar Tyson Fury, uh, he's like Wild is also a very small, thin sort of guy weighing in about 100 kilograms. And Joshua coming down, he needs a speed. You know, he can't beat those guys without speed. Powers can only take you so far if the other guys are just up pointing you. I think a guy like Tyson Fury is a nightmare for anyone in that division. And a guy like Usyk is going to give him a lot of problems as well. So Usyk can, can be a fact in the heavyweight division? Yeah, definitely. I think boxing skills, boxing-wise, 
he's got he's got the best of the best in the division. Maybe while well, Tyson Fury, I think Tyson Fury is another guy. But yeah, Usyk is a is definitely going to be a big player in the division. Gentlemen, it's been real. We're going to regroup again in the new year. So this is the first time in 2019. We'll call this the pilot of the pilot show. Uh, yeah. The boys are back in town. Yeah, the boys are back <laughs> in the boy band. Um, yeah, gentlemen, have a good Christmas. Yeah. Be safe. And to the viewers, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again in 2020. <laughs>